What is up guys? Day number three of my Make Art May drawing challenge. That's right, 31 days in May, 31 days of daily drawing prompts, all beginning with the letter M. And I thought I would get in on the action today and do a video based around today's prompt, which is Mohawk. So if you wanna get in on the challenge, you can find the prompt list on my website and also my social media accounts, which I'll list all those in the description below. But in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can draw this Mohawk skull from start to finish. A little bit different style than I usually do here on my channel, but I've talked about this style in previous videos and I've had people reach out and they want to see the lowbrow skater style that I referenced before so that's what it's going to be today. I'm also going to feature a technique that I use in the shadows and highlights process which gives you this really sharp tapered look using the selection tool, clipping masks, and the clear and fill layer options. And then stay tuned after the tutorial because I'm going to feature some of my favorite designs from my reference drawing challenge from a few weeks ago. It's all coming up in today's video so keep watching. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and draw this Mohawk skull. Starting out, I'm using a 4,000 by 4,000, 300 DPI canvas. For my brush, uh, this entire tutorial, I'm gonna stick with my cartooning brush set that's available on Gumroad right now. And to begin with, I'm gonna start out with my sketch pencil for the sketching stage of this. And for my color palette, once again, I've got this pre-made, so if you wanna follow along with the exact same colors that I'm using in today's tutorial, you can find this and download it for free on my website if you go to bjadell.com, underneath the YouTube reference materials page, which I'll link this down in the description below, you can find that color palette along with a video that helps you install them if you have problems or questions, or maybe you've never used Procreate before and installed a color palette with it. So that's there to help you along the way as well. But to start out, I'm just going to use black here to begin my sketch. And I'm just going to do just a kind of oval here in the center, circle, oval, whatever you want to call it. That's going to be the start of the head of the skull. And for this, like I said, I want it to have kind of that lowbrow skater vibe. So I'm not going with realism here, which means I'm not going to use a reference image or anything. I've drawn tons of skulls over the years. So this is going to not necessarily be a uh, photorealistic skull, but it's going to have just kind of my own kind of spin on it. So I've got the start there. I'm going to pull out the kind of cheekbone here and have that kind of exaggerated. So that's what I'm going with here is just kind of a lot of exaggeration. And this is going to come and curve down out into the bottom jaw here. Of course, that's going to come in towards the front of the skull. Now that we've got that, I'm going to go ahead and throw in my eye here. And I've got the double tap turned on. I usually don't have double tap turned on, but I was playing around with something the other day. So if you see me switching back and forth between the eraser by mistake, that's why. So we get the eye in here. We have kind of a bags coming down off the eye, which once again, stylized look because you're not going to have bags under eyes because there's no skin there but you know that's what I'm going for is that stylized look so now that we've got that that can kind of help us determine where the uh, brow comes in here so I'm going to pull out this brow here bring that out there bring this down kind of into this nose cavity here like so and then have this come back out into that bottom part of the head. So of course here, I think I'm just gonna draw on the teeth like this. So once again, this would be one of those things if this was you know realistic, the teeth would be separate from this. They kind of look painted on right now, but so I just wanted to kind of do a cool stylized look for this. So I'll just do it like that. And then from here, just kind of bring back the cranium around the back of the head here. Just kind of darken everything up here. All right, so that's going to be our basic skull. Of course, this is huge. It's taking up the entire canvas almost. That's one of the reasons why I love digital art so much, because now I can shrink it down and make room for the mohawk. So I'm going to grab the arrow up here at the top and just kind of shrink this guy down. Just like so. And that leaves room here for the mohawk. So just kind of drawing... 
curved line here at the top and then connecting it in the front and in the back and we've got our mohawk just like that from here then i think probably have some cuts coming out and around the mohawk so we'll work those in and i think that looks pretty good so that's going to be our basic sketch stage it looks really rough but the sketch stage is supposed to just be kind of getting those ideas out. The inking stage is where you can fine tune everything. You can add those details in, you can make it your own, and that's what's up next. So to do the inking, what we're gonna do first, we're gonna come up here to our layers menu, and I'm gonna make a new layer. This layer here on top is gonna be our inks layer, and down here, our sketch layer, we're gonna tap the end there to bring up the blend mode, and then we're gonna drop the opacity on this. So we wanna be able to see it, but not too dark because we want to draw on top without getting distracted. With that done, once again, grabbing my arrow, I'm going to shift him down just a little bit there and we're good. So now I want to decide where's the light source coming from because that can help me determine the line weights for my design. Anything closer to the light source is going to have thinner lines. That's where the highlights are going to be. Anything further away is going to have a thicker line. And I think for this design, we'll just have the light source coming in here from that top left hand corner. So now that we've got that decided, coming back up to my brush library, I'm going to switch over to my standard anchor streamline if it wants to work, there we go. And then once again, need to be on my top layer for the lines. So it doesn't matter where you want to start. I usually just pick some place and hop on in. And I think I'm going to just go right here to begin with. So as I'm doing this and adding these lines, something I've talked about quite a bit on my channel, you'll see I'm not exactly tracing what I had done during the sketch stage. So the sketch stage is, like I said, really just kind of getting those ideas out. It's not supposed to be something that you have to 100% trace once you go in to do the line work for the inks. Personally, I think it looks better if you keep it loose, if you don't rely on it 100%. I think it really helps to kind of give your work a little bit more of an organic feel to it. And it doesn't look as forced when you're going back through here and adding all the little fine details in. And you can even add extra lines that aren't there. That's really what I do here during the stage is just start to fine tune everything. That's why I don't worry about spending a ton of time on the sketch stage. Some people I know spend forever and beat themselves up about it and it takes so long then to go back in and do the inks because you're basically doing the inks twice. The sketch stage, you know, you take so much time on that that the inks have to match up and be perfect. And that's really the, the kind of key that you're going for here is just make the sketch stage quick, get those ideas out onto paper, onto canvas, onto digital, whatever you're using, and then use your time when you're going back in to kind of fine tune everything. So here the two, this is where I'm also adding in extra lines adding in extra details like this. It's where I kind of just really hone in for that final look. Get the back in there. And I think with this too, I wanna to have this, like I said, have that lowbrow look. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do some erasing here on these lines. And I'm gonna add in the drips here. Something I see a lot with lowbrow stuff and I've done it before on my channel as well. I think it adds to the design here and gives that more, like I said, kind of skateboard look that we're going for with this one. And then from here too, I think I've got a big area back here. I think I'm just going to add in like a heart. I have like a heart tattoo there on the back of the skull. That'll look kind of cool. Do that. Maybe some extra dots here for texture. Get those in there. Maybe some here in the front. Just whatever you can do to kind of make it your own. I'm going to turn off uh, or move over to stream or the standard anchor. So the streamline is not on with this one. If I'm doing these quick kind of detailed strokes like that, I find that having a streamline turned off brush is better for that. It gives you a little bit more tighter control. 
All right, so there we go. We've got that done. Let's go ahead and work on the Mohawk now. So I'm gonna switch back then to my streamline now. And we'll pull a line around for this. That one I wanted a little bit shorter. Like I said, you don't have to match up your sketch 100%, but certain areas like this, I did want a little bit shorter line there. I didn't want that to come all the way down there like I did on that first ink try. Same thing with this. I, I like that sketch line in there, so I want that to follow a little bit more there. I think that's good. A little overlap here, so we'll get rid of that. All right, it's cool. Next up, let's go ahead and get these cuts out of here. So I'm just going to erase these. Then I'll come back in with my brush. Just kind of make these it's like V-shaped triangles coming down for the cuts there. Just like that. And then to make these look a little bit more three-dimensional, we can pull up here from the center and do a kind of angled line back in towards the cut. So we've got some three-dimensional effects going on there and it kind of builds up the three-dimensional feel of that. So there we go. That looks pretty good. I think one last thing to do here, of course, I got to put some more drips in on the hair. So let's erase some of these, get these in here. And maybe one here towards the front. Those there. Then I want to have kind of a little bit of texture here in the hair with the inks. So once again, I'm gonna do some tapered lines here. So I'm gonna turn this brush over to the standard inker. And then coming back here to the hair, I'm just gonna add in some tapered lines here to represent the kind of hair there. And you'll see, number one, the way that you achieve this look, it's pressing down harder and then letting up pressure as you come to the end of the line, also then letting up the pencil completely. It's a very kind of uh, learned technique that you have to practice. You have to train your arm, train your muscle memory to know exactly when to press, when to let up pressure, when to let up the pencil. And you can see too, it's coming from my entire arm. So all the way from my shoulder down to my pencil. It's not coming from the wrist. If you see here, if I tried this with my wrist, I don't have as much control, number one. Number two, I don't have as much movability here. I can't cover as much area with that either. So doing it with a full motion from your shoulder to your wrist is really going to give you that look and that technique that you want to use. Add in a couple more dots here and there we go. That's the inked process. So let me go ahead and turn off my sketch layer now and you can see exactly what we're left with for the inks. I think that looks pretty good. From here then we can go ahead and move on and start coloring this in. So to start colors here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer here and I'm gonna drag this down underneath layer two. So layer one's our sketch, layer three is gonna be our color flats and layer two is gonna be our inks layer. So I wanna go ahead and come up here to my inks layer. I wanna tap this and then I wanna set this to reference. So this is going to allow us to drag and drop all of our colors onto this layer three. Using layer two is kind of a guide to tell the colors where to go. It's nice because they aren't on the same layer as our lines layer, which is gonna make adding shadows and highlights easier as we go along in the process too. So now that we've got that done, let's come up here to our colors palette and the second color here on the top, just the skull color, drag and drop that in. And that's it, we're done with that color. Pretty limited color palette this time around, not too crazy. Next up, we've got green. So we'll drag and drop this in for the hair. Gotta get those little pieces there in that three dimensional part. And then we'll just go ahead and use this for the teeth too. Now, usually you could drag and drop these in. There are multiple teeth though, to make this quicker. I've shown the recolor technique before in one of my videos. However, with Procreate's updates, the recolor changed a little bit with that. So if you're 
new to Procreate or uh, were using Recolor before and don't use it anymore because of the change. We can talk about that real quick. So if we drag and drop this color in, you'll see continue filling with Recolor comes up and it fills in the skull because I've got this cursor right here in the center. It's gonna fill in wherever that cursor is at. So if we move that down to that tooth, it's gonna fill that in and then we can just tap in the rest of the teeth. It's gonna fill them in really quick. We don't have to worry about dragging and dropping that in every single time. So a little time saver there for you. And then from here, pink, I was gonna use pink on the background, but we decided to use pink for, or the heart there so we can use pink for the heart. So there we go, that's it. Color flats done super quick, super fast. You can see just kind of how easy that is using that reference. Color flats usually are gonna be the thing that takes up the least amount of time when you're making a design in Procreate, which means though it's time to move on to shadows and highlights. So to begin with this, I'm gonna do shadows first. I'm gonna go up to my layers menu. I'm gonna make a new layer. This is gonna go on top of our color flats. We're gonna tap on this to bring up our layer options and then we're gonna to go to clipping mask. So. This is a way that I've shown before in my videos. If you followed along, I know you know this, but if you're new to the channel, number one, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. This is how I do coloring and shadows in Procreate, making a new layer on top of my color flats layer and then setting this to clipping mask. It's gonna allow us to make the shadows on this layer. They're not gonna go outside of what we've drawn here, but they're gonna be on a separate layer so we can control the opacity of those. We can make changes without affecting that layer three, which is our color flats layer. So now that that's set to clipping mask, I'm gonna come up here to my colors palette and I'm gonna switch over here to this dark blue, the uh, second row there, first color on the second row. I'm just gonna fill in a pretty big section of this design. So I'm gonna turn off reference on my lines layer because I wanna drag and drop once I start connecting these lines on this layer here. So now with that selected, I'm gonna switch over to my standard anchor streamline. Like I said, light source coming in from here, shadows are gonna be on the back side here in this section. So I'm just gonna to start to kind of fill in the shadows as they come down and around. And you'll see I'm basically using the lines and the flow of the lines that I did in the initial inking section. That's how I know how the lines are supposed to curve. That's how I decide where the lines kind of go and how they flow with the design. So as this comes around, you can see it's kind of curving with that there. This will curve up and into here. Just like that. Pull in a shadow there on the back there. And then following this down and around, kind of curving that down with the flow of the lines that we've already got there. And then same thing here at the top, kind of following that curve there. Following the lines as they come down. And then from here, just need to basically make sure that everything's connected. So once I go in to do a drag and drop, all the lines are connected and it won't fill in the entire design. It'll fill in just this section that I'm wanting to, to get shadowed in here. There we go. So that's filled in. Fill in this little three-dimensional part here. And then of course, kind of some extra in here around the front. You pull in some shadows along this back of the teeth where those lines are. Where I did those. Underneath these little lines here. And then, oops, that one kind of erased. Down here underneath the eye. And this is really up to you where you want to put these at. Just as long as you're kind of going with the flow of the light source coming in. The only really wrong way to do this is if you just totally ignore 
you know the overall direction of the light source and you've got shadows here and you've got you know shadows here on this front part as long as you've got them in the you know the general area of where they're supposed to go feel free to hit them wherever you want to all right so i think that looks pretty good from here then i can go ahead and go up here to my layers and i'm gonna hit the end for blend mode and i'm gonna drop down the opacity of this so we don't want it that solid midnight blue color. We just want it to be visible here. So I'm going to say probably about a 40% uh, looks pretty good. And that's going to be our shadows kind of locked in there. From here though, this here in the back kind of solid. Want to add a little bit more texture. And this is kind of the meat and the potatoes of this tutorial and what I wanted to show off. I've talked about this, I think, one other time in a video, so you might have missed it before. But when I'm doing hair like this and want to add in some of those really cool techniques that you see a lot of times, like in comic books, the way that you can do this is instead of going in here and erasing lines or adding in lines or painting them in with the shadow color we can actually use the selection tool instead so with the selection tool touched up there we want to make sure that we're on freehand down here i'm going to zoom in a little bit here so we can see this better and what i'm going to do is keeping my pencil touching the screen i'm just going to come in here with some kind of jagged tapered lines and then connect those lines there so you see that little dot was there, I connected them. Do it one more time so I can show you again so you see it. So I did my last line there and just touched right there to connect. Now I can come up here to my layers menu and with that shadow layer, I can go ahead and tap on that and I can hit clear. It's not gonna clear out everything we did, it's only gonna remove that selection that we just made. So hitting clear then, you can see that I've got that very cool kind of comic book tapered look now to the hair. And then we can just kind of go through here and repeat this process as we kind of go around. Once again, just kind of flowing with the lines that are already there and just adding in a few of these as we go. Tapping to connect it, going up to our layers, tapping on the shadows layer and hitting clear. It erases it. If you have some areas like this that kind of go off on their own. You can just go in here and fill those in then with your paintbrush. You can see we started to get this really cool look here that we got going on. And we can just repeat this process as we go around. So just kind of doing these tapers, connecting, going up to the layers menu, tapping and hitting clear. So we've got these cool tapers. I went back too far there. There we go. And then cleaning up here at the ends. You just want to fix those and make those look a little bit better. So that's removing those. We can even do this back section here too. So we go to the selection tool again. And this one I won't make as big here. Tapping there to connect. Going up here to the layers menu. And then tapping clear. That's going to remove. Now, if I want to remove other parts here too, I can just go in with the eraser to do that. Like I want to remove a little bit of this on the front using my streamline. This, I wouldn't use the selection tool to do that. But to give off that feel and that kind of hair look and that reflection in there is a really good way to do that is with that selection. This was removing those though. We can also add them in using the same technique. So if we go to the selection tool once again, come in here, add in some of the tapers, connect it. Now, when we go up here to the layers menu though, we're not gonna hit clear because there is no shadow here now. We need to hit fill layer. Once again, it's not gonna fill the entire layer because we've got that selection made. It's only gonna fill in that part that we've selected. So hitting fill layer there, and you can see we've got some really cool taper, tapers there as well. I think I might continue this one more time here towards the front. And just add a couple more in there. Tapping to connect. Going to layers. Tapping on our shadow layer. And hitting fill layer. 
and it brings that one in there as well. So there we go. Just a really cool technique. Hopefully you guys can use that for some stuff in your own artwork as well. And then well, from here then, we're gonna go ahead and add in some highlights. So to add in highlights, much like the shadows, we're just gonna make a new layer here. And I'm gonna tap on that layer and I'm gonna go ahead and Set this once again to clipping mask, just like we did there. Now we've got two clipping mask layers. It's okay if you add a clipping mask on top of a clipping mask, it still refers back down to that base layer. This one is not gonna refer to this one. It's gonna go all the way down there to that one. So now that we've got that set, we're gonna come up here to our colors palette. And we're gonna go to white for our highlights. Once again, got the light source coming in from that top left-hand corner. I'm going to use that standard anchor streamline again and i'm just going to kind of go around here once again just on those edges that are closest to the light source just kind of filling these in you can add in some extra effects here maybe just some ovals for the shine there you're pulling in some highlights here around the The heart too, so that's not just one solid color back there. We can do that. Just on the tips here of these. Add in some there. Some here around the eye on that section there. And around the front of the teeth too. Once again, just wherever you see fit that goes with the flow of the direction of the light source coming in. I just want to make sure you keep that the same. And then a couple more oval ones up here. So that looks good. And then around here on the top of the Mohawk. And once again here, we can use that same technique that we used back here in the hair up here on the top of the Mohawk too. So I'm gonna spin this around here. And we're gonna come in once again with the selection tool. And just do a couple of those same tapered lines here just like we did before. Tapping that to close it, going up here. And once again, these don't exist, so we're not clearing, we're filling. So we're gonna tap that layer and we're gonna hit fill layer. We've got one there. Go down here and instead of coming in from the edge here, we could actually go in on the inside here. So this one we've got clear to the edge. So this one we could come in here. Whoops, go to our selection tool, come in here and pull some out that way. Going into the layers menu again, fill layer, and we've got some here in the center. Of course, I don't want these touching right here, so I wanna kinda of remove that a little bit, like there. But now we're using the same technique with the highlights, adding in some more there, and once again, I think it looks pretty cool. Might add another one in right here. Filling, or touching that to connect them, and then going here, and filling layer. And there we go, we've got another one now. So just a really cool technique that you can use both with the shadows and the highlights in this case. Of course, only use that when it makes sense on certain designs, it definitely wouldn't make sense. And then also, you know, decide how sparingly you want to use it. And yeah, that's gonna be about it for that. So let's go ahead and adjust the opacity now. So once again, coming back up to our layers, hitting the end for blend mode and dropping down the opacity say probably about 64, 65%. That looks pretty good right there. And then from here, it's when you can kind of finish it out. So if you wanted to add any more, you know, little tweaks from here, now that you've kind of got everything done, come back up to that ink layer here, you could add in, you know, some extra lines here on the, the cutouts if you wanted to do that. If you wanted to add in just, you know, little lines here and there, that's usually what I save this step of the process for. But that's pretty much it there. So let's go ahead and add a background real quick. So coming back up here to the layers menu, I'm gonna come down to the bottom and I'm gonna make a new layer. 
And then we're going to come up here to our colors palette. We're going to choose pink here. And then I'm just going to draw a circle holding down and then holding down my other finger locks it into a perfect circle. And then we can drag and drop that color in there. Using the arrow here, I can kind of just reposition and change the size of it just so it gets lined up a little bit better with the flow of the design here. There we go. And then from here, just to make that look a little bit more exciting, coming up to the adjustments layer, let's go ahead and use half tone on this one. And then selecting layer, we can slide to the right. And it's going to add that half tone in there. I think that looks pretty good. Final step here, want to go ahead and just select everything and move everything here just a little bit towards the top and shrink it down just a tad, just to make sure it's exactly where I want it. And then final thing to do is come in here and actually sign this. So switching back to my standard anchor, just want to get that signed and then we're going to be done. So there we go. How to draw a Mohawk skull. That's day number three of my Make Art May drawing challenge. Like I said, that's going on right now. If you do take part in these, there's 31 days in May, of course, which means 31 days of daily drawing prompts, all beginning with the letter M. You can find, I think I'll put it here on the screen, but this prompt list on my website. You can also find it on my Instagram, my Twitter account, and also in the Keep Creating group over on Facebook, which I will link all those down in the description below. Feel free to download the prompt list, share it on your social media. And then once you do the designs based on the daily prompts, share those too. And make sure you use the hashtag MakeArtMay so I can see them later on. If you're on Facebook and post them there, make sure you using the hashtag as well. Makes it easier for me to find them because in June, I'm gonna do a review video picking one artist for every single day of the month and highlighting their artwork on my channel. So it's a good way for you to possibly see your work featured on my channel in the month of June. Plus, like I announced to in the announcement video, I'm going to pick one winner that does all 31 days and they're going to get a special prize pack as well. So really look forward to seeing what you guys do. And that's it for today's video. Or is it? No, it's really not. Because also at the end of this coming up right now, I'm going to highlight some of my favorite submissions from my previous art challenge that I did all about drawing with reference photos. It was the BJ Dell ref art challenge, and that's coming up right now. So the whole idea of the reference drawing challenge that I posted a few weeks ago here on YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and Facebook was to take this photo of a rhino, use it as a reference image, and then draw a design or an illustration based around it. So let's take a look at some of my favorite designs from the past couple weeks. First up, we've got cool yellow hands from Instagram. And this one I really love. A very strong children's book illustration feel to this. Very good storytelling techniques too. We've got not only the rhino from the reference image, but we get a bonus character in the way of this little bird hanging off the rhino's horn. So speaking of the storytelling, you just kind of want to know more about what's going on. So did these two just meet? Are they old friends? Are they on a journey? What's going on? Very, very cool look. Love just just the overall color usage here too. The shadows and highlights really well done, especially the highlights around the upper back there. And then the ears really makes the design pop. And I love kind of the off centering of the characters and it's kind of balanced out there on the right hand side by all the grass and the weeds growing up there. Just really strong composition and a very cool design. So thanks so much for taking part in the challenge. Cool yellow hands. Next up, we've got Blue Moon Cartoons, also from Instagram. And this one, the first thing you notice is kind of that vintage feel to it. We've got that paper texture and the rips and tears and bends and creases across there. I think that looks really, really cool. And then the design itself is really great too. So I've always talked about on my channel that I love cartooning because I love to take proportions of things and just kind of 
warp them and change them and stretch them out as much as possible. And this is a really good example of that. We've got that ridiculously huge hump there behind the head, which is just massive, but I think it's so funny and it works. It really uh, gives a lot of humor to the design. And then the overall wrinkles here, just kind of almost sagging and creeping down over top of the legs there. Just really, really cool. The way that the back feet are so super wide and those ankles are super, super thin. I just think it's a really humorous design, a really well executed cartoon. So thanks so much, Blue Moon Cartoons, for sharing that one. On to another cartoon, we've got Mark Lawler from the Keep Creating Group. So these are going to be a mix of all over the place where they were posted. And once again, just a really strong design with this one. Very kind of classic Calvin and Hobbes meets the far side feel. I just think it's got that Saturday morning cartoon feel to it. The, the cartoons in the paper, you know, flipping through and you get to your favorite strip, you could see this one popping off the page as well. So just a good, good job. Good use of line weights too, and just an overall fantastic piece. Stretching out, once again, those proportions and just making it humorous. So thanks so much for sharing that one, Mark. Next up, we've got Tracy Gardasani from the Keep Creating Group as well. Hopefully I pronounced your name correctly. And this one, Tracy says, my take on the Rhino Reference Challenge. Had a blast doing this and based it on the poor eyesight that rhinos have. So once again, we get a secondary character in this one. We've got the mouse there holding up the lunch menu in front of the rhino. And just a really good, once again, children's book illustration vibe to this one. Just great use of textures and colors in this. Same thing with this one too. The highlights just really make everything pop. In addition to that depth of field. So we've got the blurred background in the back there. And it just just really draws your eyesight in to the main characters. It's nice because there is a background, so it's not just, you know, a half finished design with white floating there. We've got a finished background, but having it blurred, having that depth of field, make sure that the attention is strictly on the characters in the foreground and you're not paying attention to that background. So really strong design choice there as well, Tracy. So thanks so much for sharing that. Next up, we've got Jamas with Rhino Warrior. And this one's really cool because definitely used it as a reference as far as the positioning of the Rhino and the direction it was looking. But at the same time, you know, just used the head and then kind of went off on a different path. I love the sketchiness to this. It has that really rough kind of energetic feel. You can feel the emotion and just the fun that Jamas had drawing this just by all those sketchy lines has a really strong kind of concept art look to it. And it has just a strong presence and a strong character development there on the page. So just a really cool choice. Love the armor, love the, the shield and then the uh, weapon there on the, the right hand side too. Just really, really cool. So thanks so much for submitting that one. Next up, we've got Nancy, and this one is really cute. I love the addition of the little sun or gardening hat there tied around. Super cute. Same thing with the basket of flowers kind of wrapped around the back of the rhino there. I think that was an adorable choice. Really kind of adds an extra uh, depth to the, the rhino, gives it a story just like some of the previous ones as well. It makes you want to know a little bit more about this cute, cute rhino. One thing here that I would definitely recommend the rhino itself has a, quite a bit of shading and you've got some textures there too in the, the rhino skin and then also the background, but then you kind of stopped on the ground itself. So if you're going to add in the shadows and add in the textures, I would definitely recommend just going all in and adding something there to the ground. You don't have to do, you know, super detailed work, but just adding in a little bit of texture work there too is going to make it match up with the rest of the design, but just a really, really strong one. So thanks so much for submitting that. Next up, we've got Fantastic Cruising from Instagram, and this rhino is really cool. Once again, a lot of personality here. I love that kind of mangled horn there in the front as it twists around, and just the accentuated kind of details, the way that the ribs there come in on the back, using those highlights and those shadows to play off each other, really kind of cuts those in even more, draws even more attention to them, and gives even more depth and dimension. So just a really cool design. Love the purple too. 
you know, rhinos are gray, but we see them purple all the time. And I think this purple one really works. So just a really cool design. Once again, thanks so much. Fantastic cruising from Instagram. Also coming from Instagram, we've got Rebecca Art with his very pop art rhino submission. Love this, a four piece ensemble using the same rhino drawing and just changing the colors on this. Very, very cool. Like I said, very pop art feeling to this. Of course, it's looking the opposite direction of the rhino in the reference photo, but with things like this, you can tell it's just flipped the other way, still use the reference photo. So a really cool look to this. Love the colors, love how each frame looks different, even though it's the exact same drawing, but it still has a unique feel from one frame to the next, and it all works together in that four square. So really, really cool design there. And finally, we've got MJ217 from Instagram, but also on Facebook as well. MJ's got this really fantastic series going on of all these different animals using my children's book illustration pack for procreate and the watercolor background texture. And I love seeing MJ's constant designs pop up of all these different animals and the funny little puns for the names based on celebrities. Uh, I think they're also turning it into a book down the line too. So definitely be on the lookout for that, but just a really, really cute design as always a lot of expression and a lot of character in all of the designs that they post based around this series, just good use of color. It's bright, it's inviting, it's warm. And I love when these pop up in the feed, super, super cool. So thanks so much for submitting that one. So that's it for the reference drawing challenge. Like I said earlier, I've got the make art may drawing challenge going on right now. So you have 31 days of daily drawing prompts, all beginning with the letter M. Post your designs online, tag me at BJ Dell, as well as using the hashtag MakeArtMay for your chance to see your artwork featured in an upcoming video, just like the ones you just saw here. I'm going to collect all the submissions and then do a video in June featuring one artist from each day, highlighting their artwork so you can possibly see your art featured in that upcoming video. So that's it for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, keep creating.